Well, welcome. We are so glad that y'all are here today. Um, this is the 2015 Judson Women's Leadership Conference. My name is Lauren Judson, and I am one of the co-founders and the vice president for the JCI Foundation. We're a nonprofit organization that develops creative programming to inspire, nurture, and educate young women, just like yourselves, um, to become leaders both personally and professionally. So we started the foundation in 2012, and this was two years after I lost my parents in a plane crash. They spent most of their life work um, helping other people and furthering education and also women's leadership. Let me ask you this, what would happen every day if you woke up and embraced each and every moment fearlessly? How would that feel? What would it feel like if you woke up every day and took advantage of each and every opportunity in your life fearlessly? What if, for example, we embraced failure and loved it and believed failure was awesome because inside of failure, we grow. Inside of failure, we learn to recover. What if we embraced those things in a fearless way? Would it make us better? No question it would make us better. Acting like you have the business before you have the business. It's like acting like that relationship is in place before that relationship is in fact in place. Because when we can maximize our energy, we can maximize ourselves. So don't hit that first speed bump in your career and take that as a sign to lower your expectations or give up your dreams. Never give up your dreams. Keep moving over those speed bumps and take it as a sign that you are on the same road as so many of the women before you. The women who dared to imagine, who fell down and got up, who pushed through adversity and who came out stronger on the other side. And at at and we work hard to help women hang on to that ambition because we know that having the right talent at the table, both men and women, is critical to our success and growth. And go get it. The possibilities are absolutely endless. You can achieve greatness. It's up to you to make it happen. One of the biggest lessons that I will give you is to focus on things that are small enough to change but big enough to matter. Stop whining, stop complaining, figure it out and make it happen. Don't wait for somebody to bring you a solution, just try stuff, and if it doesn't work, you're that much closer to the next solution. I will tell you, you have to be at a point in your life as often as you can, where your pride in what you are a part of, and your gratitude for what you have the opportunities to do, exceed your concern over what others think of you. But whenever you have choices, you have power. Whenever you have power, you have more privilege. And when you have more privilege, guess what? You have a greater responsibility to give back. Very, very rare. People want to reach out, but they very rarely ask you for something. And it's interesting because when I'm connecting with someone, I'm always listening for the ask. I'm always listening for how I can help because I love helping. Much like your personal values, it's your code of conduct. And when you start identifying what you stand for, it's what you should be living every day. Where this starts going back to the brand is, and yourselves, is be authentic. Don't pretend to be something you aren't. You're only in control of you. No one else is. No one in your job is going to look out for you. Only you are in control of your career and who you are. I think women have less ego and are much more resilient to just fight and do whatever they have to do. So just don't forget that, I would say. They proved that the leaders who served their teams and organizations best produced superior performance results. For 20 years, my leadership philosophy was summed up in these words. I am a leader who thinks like a man, acts like a lady, and works like a dog. And I've come to believe it's in this dynamic tension between the courage and humility in the leader that creates the conditions for superior performance. The truth of the matter is the purpose of your life. The only thing you'll ever be remembered for is what you did for other people. That's it. Being at peace with yourself when you wake up will better determine on your day. And if you do not like what you're doing, if you do not love what you're doing, then don't do it. Pick something else. If you want to be a woman, if you want to be a woman, you don't need a sugar daddy. You don't need it. 
All right, that's my main thing. You can be a woman and you can be the sugar mama. That's what that's I right. have it. <laughs> so men and women are different. People perceive men and women different. And what women have to understand is our differences are wonderful. It's what makes us who we are, and we need to embrace and support each other, especially when men don't understand it. Dress accordingly and fit in, just like you say. Your environment is what you want to do. Do not get comfortable. Yes. How's that for a party I like thought? That. That's don't perfect. ever get comfortable. You might know what you're doing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I constantly feel like I'm. I'm on my toes. Um, for someone like me, that, that's what I want. I want to be challenged all the time. I, I don't want to be in a job where it, it's rote. You know, that works for some people. Um, that person is not sitting in the seat. <laughs> How's that? You got to work both angles to kind of get ahead. Um, probably all of these women here can attest to that, that, you know, you can be really excellent at your job, but you still got to play the politics, so to speak. We grow the most when we feel personally uh, at risk. So I think uh, the first thing my, that I would advise is to be somebody who's coachable. Um, and I think that when you as a leader model back to people that you still are trying to learn and coach and be coached, uh, you tend to encourage people to be coachable themselves. Is Don't be afraid to say, hi, my name is Trish. What's your name? Mm -hmm. Ask my three questions. What are you doing here today? You know, what do you hope to get out of today? Where are you from? You know, wh What do you do for a living? So practice your questions. And I would just add to stay, stay curious inside of those conversations, right? Stay curious and explore and ask questions and learn. And secondly, don't ever ask a question that you could have figured out before the meeting before the interaction right so the more prepared you are the more you can send a message to them that that relationship matters to you and I love to say to people too you know sign up for projects not just can I get your advice but can I work on something that you're you need help with so that you can learn from that process as well soon to be graduates pray and looking for a job fake yeah. it till you make it <laughs> yeah read my first book okay I mean that was right there I mean you know that's what I do. I, I have a piece of advice for you. ADECO, which is a major staffing company in the U.S., did a study last year to determine uh, what was the number one reason why young people were not hired when they interviewed for jobs coming out of college. And the number one reason they were not hired was they were dressed inappropriately. Oh, yes. That was, yes, that's was a good one. Absolutely line. stunning. So when you go into an interview, make sure you've done a little homework on how people dress uh, that are in the job that you're applying for and, and dress appropriately. They also said people didn't make good eye contact. Can I add people... handshake to that too? Please have yes. a firm oh, web yes. to web handshake as a woman and not the church handshake. Do the web to web firm handshake. I call it the limp fish handshake. Yes, yeah. I can't stand it. Practice with uh, with a friend on that handshake. And and the other thing is, and this is something I have to practice a lot, is just your posture. Make sure when you go in for an interview that you're sitting up straight. You're making the, the eye contact and uh, have that handshake. And don't forget to smile, because a smile makes it look like you're approachable and you'd be somebody fun to work with. Uh, I believe that each and every one of us, all right, all of us, are born leaders. It's whether or not we decide or build up the courage to nurture and develop that inner leader uh, as a deciding factor whether you'll be perceived as a leader or a follower. And I truly believe that leadership accelerates under pressure. You have so much control in your life and your destiny and you can't let the opinions of others put you in a box and limit yourself. Or when God created you, he created a designer original, right? So why waste your time being a knockoff of someone else when there's such greatness already in you? So take the time and develop that. So whether you know it's life challenges or through formal training, welcome it, nourish it, and watch it grow. Thank you for your time.